So there are an, a number of enduring myths in Bitcoin, and um, one of them has always been this idea that users want to be their own bank. You know, this whole idea of not your keys and uh, not your coins. But uh, this is clearly false, and if you have a Bitcoin business, I mean, we've been operating now for over two years, one thing that we know clearly uh, and quite uh, uh, you know, t at the core is that users aren't interested in having, uh, uh, being their own bank. You know, uh, even sophisticated people forget their keys and uh, what they're expecting is the same sort of service that a typical financial services provider can offer. So you know, if you think about the banking systems and you think about the payment systems, those systems are successful because over years they've been developing a, a core technology that helps the user through that journey, keeping their information safe, keeping their coins safe, and providing the sort of support and, uh, uh, that, that uh, makes that user experience um, uh, uh, successful. Now, when you want to build a Bitcoin business, you have to think about the foundation that you are developing. And uh, this could be quite boring if you're this kind of person who just likes to develop apps, but a Bitcoin business is not an app. It's a, it is something that has a core foundation of a whole number of things, and one of those important things is what's called a control environment, and that's how your business operates. What sort of procedures and, and policies do you have? What kind of tone does the management have? What sort of uh, ethics is there involved with managing customer data and customer funds? And then, of course, you know, it's not just about uh, the people within the company, but it, there's also the, the idea of the owners of that business, the shareholders, and the people who control that business. The, the directors and the management. And so you have to now uh, make sure that uh, if you are working within that business, that you are uh, making sure that the, uh, the goals and the mission of, the, of all the, uh, the stakeholders involved are, are clearly aligned. And that involves having meetings and making sure the communication lines are open, uh, making sure that uh, the directors and the management are remunerated uh, properly. So these are the things that if you're not thinking about and you're trying to build a Bitcoin business, then uh, you're not going to be able to provide that kind of service uh, that users expect. And then, of course, you know, it doesn't matter how uh, sound your business is, how well everybody operates, but uh, we've got the silent partner, the regulatory authority, and what they require is that you do all sorts of uh, things that uh, might not necessarily uh, uh, something that you want to do. You know, uh, you have to follow the laws, you have to now uh, look at the, the kinds of the regulatory obligations that you have. Uh, and without these, uh, these uh, uh, sort of the foundation, you're not going to be able to create a business that can thrive and can develop, and uh, where you can actually provide value, not only to your customers, but uh, to the, the stakeholders uh, at large. And also, of course, as a business, you know, as a, as a sort of uh, a entity on its own, it also has a corporate responsibility, a social responsibility. And uh, we don't all just want to make money in our businesses. What we want to do is we want to be a good citizen. We want to make the world a better place. And clearly, if you've been involved in Bitcoin, there's this whole notion of that, uh, something that we can change the world for the better. We can provide value to the, 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 the people and the, and the users that are out there. So um, one of the things now I want to just talk about is how Centby operates. We have this, these core uh, uh, idea, ideas around how a business should be. And I want to just tell you about uh, when it comes to building a, a business that operates at the same level as a financial services company, what are the sorts of things that you should be thinking about? Now, obviously, you're going to want to uh, hire people and you're going to want to build good uh, systems. And uh, of course, there are a whole set of best practices out there, not just building technology, but also how you run it operationally. And if you stick to these sorts of best practices, it becomes a lot easier to then hire people uh, because then there's not a, it's not a mystery about how things are done. Uh, you're following all the, 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 the good ideas that have been put in place over time. Then, of course, you know, uh, Sempi, we take this very uh, seriously. You know, uh, uh, we don't just uh, put software out there. Of course, you know, uh, it's impossible to eliminate every sort of bug. But uh, what we do is we take our software through user acceptance testing. You know, we get uh, control groups of people who will try out the software. They'll give us feedback. Uh, we do a, a lot of quality assurance. And then uh, the whole user experience. Because, you know, Bitcoin, even though it seems uh, strange and magical, of course, it just, it's meant to operate like money. And uh, uh, if you 
you can make sure that the, the software and the systems that you're producing and, and putting out into the public are easy and accessible, you're going to have a lot more success in, in uh, uh, delivering uh, those systems. Then uh, thinking about a scalable architecture, you know, um, uh, when we started building Centby, you know, we just sort of had this uh, idea that we're going to build an app, we're going to build a wallet, people will be able to store their bitcoins in there. But as we've been working on this uh, project over the last uh, three years, you know, we've realized that the systems that we're actually developing, uh, if we think about the scalability, if we think about it in a, in, in a, uh, for, over a long term, what you actually start doing is you start creating a sound uh, platform where you can now think about other business models. Now, of course, in this Bitcoin space, it's uh, not always clear what's going to work and what's not going to. But by us, when we're developing Centby, thinking about a scalable infrastructure and architecture, it means that now we can start thinking about other businesses. And now, not only do we have Centby Wallet as a, as a, as a product, but we've now been able to branch out into our remittance business, our cross-border remittance business, which is now being rebranded as Minute Money. Uh, that has been uh, uh, possible for us because we don't just have a narrow focus on the way we build out the technology. We actually have a, a broad focus. And uh, this is just one of the, the other things. But uh, it turns out that when you start thinking about your scalable architecture, suddenly now you can start thinking about making that architecture available to others. Uh, we have a, a whole platform as a service idea that we are now starting to, uh, 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 starting to think about because all these systems that are being put into place, being so scalable, it's now possible to think about offering that as a service on its own. Then uh, security audits, this is now something that's incredibly important. If you're holding people's money, you know, uh, it's not good enough that you just make it all fancy and uh, interesting. You have to make sure that that software is sound and cannot be broken. And so what we've done is we've actually got uh, two security companies who are specifically focused on trying to break Centby and the products that we have. And uh, what they do is they give us feedback and uh, we then go and make uh, uh, improvements to the software. So uh, we are very proud that we can actually offer that as part of the, the package that uh, comes with Centby. Then uh, partnerships, you know, uh, Centby uh, is not just a company that stands on its own. What has made us so successful in the African continent is this idea of connecting with partners that enable new opportunities. So what we have now is we've got a, a whole retail product where people can go into stores and they can purchase Bitcoin over the counter at every, just about every single supermarket in the country. And now how did we do that? Well, we needed to make par have partnerships. And uh, pa uh, these uh, partners, they don't want to partner with anybody. You know, you've got to uh, have credentials. You have to give them the assurance that you're not going to drag their name down into the into the dirt so it's very very important finding those partners that can enable new sorts of opportunities and then uh, finally you know uh, again uh, this is uh, something that is more of a sort of regulatory thing but uh, St. B has, uh, uh, over the last few years, made it our, our focus to engage the regulatory authorities, find out what sort of licenses are required when it comes to money remittance or payments. And uh, we have actually applied and actually uh, acquired some traditional sorts of licenses that uh, would be applicable for a, a, a typical financial services business. Now, of course, we're not obligated to do this, but we want to, sh to uh, uh, show not just you know, our customers that we're thinking about you know, uh, the, the soundness of the business, but also uh, sending a signal out to the regulatory authorities that we are uh, wanting to play by the rules and we want to be considered a grown-up business that uh, uh, should be taken seriously. And also, uh, being engaged with these regulatory authorities, my co-founder, Angus Brown, uh, is uh, uh, very engaged with the, 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 uh, the regulators, uh, offering uh, insights uh, and making recommendations and has become part of the, the, the way that the regulators are thinking about this, that means that we now have this ability, and this is why we've been so successful, to now start rolling out these products across the African continent. So these are just some of the things that if you are thinking about uh, building a Bitcoin business, and you are only really thinking about it in terms of the app, the cool kind of product, the cool app that you want to deliver, you can see that there's a whole lot of other things that actually makes your business uh, have the potential to grow and uh, uh, to become a, 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 a real force uh, for good. 
So um, I'm not, I haven't really uh, uh, you know, spoken much about uh, the product of SentB. Obviously, we're in version 2. But what I want to do is I want to give you a quick journey about uh, how SentB operates. Now, what we have done is we've now experimented with uh, standard marketing and standard advertising. And we found that uh, there's a lot of success. There's a lot of appetite out there in the market for people to actually use Bitcoin products. So we've actually gone out and uh, done typical mainstream sort of advertising campaigns like on radio and so on. Also, what we do is we do a regulatory check. We do a, a KYC check. Know your customer. We require that users, when they purchase these products, enter personal information. Now, of course, for a crypto ideologue, you know, that's uh, an anathema. But uh, we make sure that uh, that information is stored. And not only that, but every single transaction, all the history of transactions that uh, uh, happens on Centby, we actually do record. And uh, we do uh, anti-money laundering checks and uh, counter-terrorist financing. We do uh, 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 what is called a PEP scan or sanction screening, politically exposed person screening. And that allows us to give uh, our customers levels of, uh, so we can then assign the limits that there are, are uh, uh, things that they're allowed to purchase. Again, sending a signal to the regulators that we're willing to operate within their regime. And then finally, with all this information, it means that we can give good support. You know, uh, obviously, SentB, as a, as a startup a company that's uh, running, we know there's the issues that happen, but we make it a huge focus to be able to provide great support to our customers. If somebody wants, has a problem, we have a phone line, we've got email, we've got Telegram, and we make sure that we are always there for them, and we find that that is a great way to keep our, the customers engaged. Now, um, SentB version 2 is out. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the different uh, for, the, the, the new things that are involved uh, inside SentB. You know, obviously, we've got uh, uh, in-app loads if you're in certain countries. Uh, we've got a very strong focus on our customer, on the user. We, we still think of SentB as a social networking app. So uh, in the Send screen, you can now go and uh, add mobile numbers, pay mails, and all that sort of thing. But in the last minute that I have, I do want to boast about and, uh, and offer you guys something cool uh, that SentB now does. Um, one of the, the things that you'll notice if you download uh, SentB version 2 is this profile. You know, we want to now capture your, your information. But now, uh, Justin Johnson, he's uh, the owner of uh, a coffee uh, roastery in, in South Africa. And uh, uh, he uh, supplies the world with, uh, with coffee. And uh, one of the things he, he likes to do is invoice in, with Bitcoin, and he uses his PayMail. But it's very confusing when uh, you know, he has to provide two different email addresses on the, on, uh, the, the form. He's got his PayMail. He's got his Justin at SentB.com. Uh, but uh, you know, wouldn't it be great if he only had to have a worry about one email? And that's why I'm very proud to offer to you right now in SentB what we are now calling personal PayMail. And personal PayMail means that you can now go and put your own email address into SentB Wallet, and uh, you can just hook up. There's a little step-by-step uh, -step process that you can do. It's very quick. You edit some DNS. And what you can now do within SentB is have your own email address uh, as your PayMail, and uh, then you only need to offer one email address uh, to your, your customers. <laughs> OK. And of course, it's only on, on Bitcoin SV. So I urge you to try and download, uh, download SentB. Uh, we've got our, our store, our, st uh, our stand outside. A lot of the team is here today. We, it's not just Angus and myself. Uh, we've got uh, Lloyd, our CTO, Rob, our CFO, Heidi, our head of marketing. And uh, please come and engage with us and uh, find out more about SentB. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Hannah Jackson for CoinGeek.com. And I'm here with Lorian Gamaroff from SentB. So lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me. Now, one of the biggest themes uh, from last year's conference that Jimmy mentioned was the fact that Bitcoin in general had to grow up a little bit and become you know, a bit more mature in terms of regulation, compliance. So how do you feel businesses are doing this in general and sent me? We take that very seriously. You know, we've had tremendous success down in South Africa and across the continent because we don't just think of ourselves as this little tech startup creating cool products. You know, we think of ourselves as a financial services business. When you are a financial services business, there are certain obligations that you have, not just to your customers, but also to the regulators. And so what we want to do is we want to bring all those best practices and all those important ideas around how to sustain a business, provide the best value for our customers in a traditional sort of way. And so that's why we think we're radicalizing Bitcoin by becoming traditional. Oh, 
Oh, fantastic. Well, tell me a little bit more about your company then and what it's doing, what you're looking forward to in the future. Yeah, so we, we are quite a diverse company. We ha don't just have a Bitcoin wallet. Well, our aim is to bring Bitcoin to Africa. One of the great opportunities in Africa is the high cost of moving money cross-border. And uh, of course, we can now offer a better solution using Bitcoin. A lot of people from different African countries work around the world and work through the continent. And every single month, they're sending back small amounts of money to their families at great cost and often it takes a lot of time and there's a lot of inconvenience involved, a lot of paperwork. But by using Bitcoin, we've been able to provide a product that is now faster, cheaper, and we think it's going to have a tremendous effect, a positive effect on the continent. But not only that, we have a whole focus on merchants. We like the idea of Bitcoin as cash. So what we want to do now is we've already solved the how do people get Bitcoin problem with our in-store purchase products that we have. You can go buy your groceries and Bitcoin at the same time at every major supermarket in the country. And so now we have to now try and find a way of getting people to spend that Bitcoin. So we're building out a whole lot of merchant payment systems as well. Cool thing we've rolled out now now in Sent Me Wallet, this extension to this idea of PayMail. Now, you know, of course, sending Bitcoin to people has always been complicated. There's this great idea now in Bitcoin SV, which is called PayMail, but that normally means you have to get a different sort of email from your own personal email. Well, Sent Me Wallet now allows you to add your own personal email into the wallet, and that can become your PayMail, and you can receive money, and you don't need to try and snatch up a handle, which has been typical up to now. I can see you're very proud of that, aren't you? As you definitely should be. So apart from that, what else can we expect to see from you in the future? Well, we are certainly going to be pushing the models that we have right now, which in Southern Africa and in Nigeria, we're going to be expanding into different countries. We hope to start uh, spreading out into other emerging economies, possibly in South America and in Asia. Thank you. Thank you very much.